one God, Amen. Today is this is the third Sunday of Tort. Oh, sorry, second Sunday of Tort. And um, in the new year, it's a it's a nice. It was a nice way to start. It's a nice way to begin the new year with the greatest commandment that Christ has given us. And it's all that we should, and it's it's one, it's really one commandment, but Christ split them in two. But it's it's really nice if we can, you know, as much as we can take this commandment and um and live with it because Christ told us in the gospel today, do you have answered rightly? We know what the commandment is, therefore you have answered rightly, do this and you shall live. And this is a commandment from Christ because it says, do this, just like he gave us his holy body and blood. And he said, do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, this is a commandment that Christ has given us. So it's important for us that we um, abide by these commandments. And of course, all of the other commandments that Christ has given us. And there could be about maybe just under 50 commandments in the gospels, teaching us how to inherit eternal life and what we are supposed to do on this earth in order for us to get there. I'm going to read this passage. Um, It's exactly the same passage from the Gospel of Mark, uh, chapter 12. Hear, O Israel, uh, sorry, the first of all commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. So this is the difference between Luke and Mark. And then it's the same. And you shall love your love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. And this is the first commandment. And the second, like it, is you shall love your neighbor as yourself. And there is no other commandment greater than these. So this this is the um the source of all of the virtues in our in our lives but number one before all of this the lord our god the lord is one so the first really um commandment is that we have to have faith and our lord jesus christ says this before the commit before the main commandment and he, he asks us to remember the faith because if we if you love our lord and you love the people or the brethren and you do not have faith in the oneness of god the commandment doesn't help us so, and even in the creed, in every single service of the of uh, of the, our church, we say we believe in one God, as in the creed. And we notice that our Lord did not answer these questions according to the request, but rather he answered according to the request with one answer. But he answered with two commandments, because the, both commandments are not separated from each other, and it's not possible to mention one without doing without mentioning the other. And it's important that we have to do one and then do the other. However, if we do implement the first commandment, we naturally come and we naturally will do the second commandment without even knowing. So if we honestly do, and if we honestly do the first, the second commandment, that is to love our brethren or love our brothers and sisters or love people as Christ commanded us, we will be doing the first commandment as well. So, and and this, this commandment has two parts. One of them is divine. It is to love the Lord your God And it is to love your neighbor as yourself. And that's why Christ said that the second is like it, is to love your neighbor as yourself. So both of them are of the same uh, importance and of the same value and is is the center of the commandment, which is the virtue of love. Um, So so let's let's maybe see what the the four or the the four... um, Character, characteristics of love are that is to love with your heart, the love, love for your, from your soul, with your strength and with all your mind. To love with our heart means that all of our feelings and emotions go toward God and our heart becomes so full of his love that we don't need anyone else. And God wants us to reach this level of love because he loved us unconditionally and without any limits. Therefore, he wants us to love the same way as much as we can the same way back. If we love God with all of our heart, we, there is no place for sin. This is this is obviously this is the perfect love that we want, you know, between between us and God. But I have to ask, we all have to ask ourselves, and I have to ask myself, am I do I really have this same love of God that 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 God loves me or that, that God shows me? So this is something that we have to, and I, we we um, we were talking a lot, you know, during we have a Bible study with the youth on a Friday night. And we, we spoke a lot about the, the mountain and the mountain being a retreat place where we go back just as Christ took uh, Peter, James and John to the transfiguration. Likewise, we have to go back to our mountain for our special retreat place with God. Whenever we go back to this retreat place or wherever we go back to this mountain, it's important for us to be able to um, 
to be able to reflect and to review ourselves based on on these um, on, on these questions that God gives us, or based on these commandments that God gives us. So He says to us, "Love God with all your heart." So I have to ask myself, do I long for God? Do I do I stand in prayer with God in my in my mountain? Do you hold to do you hold do you long to hold the Bible and spend some time with God? He who loves God so dearly from all his heart will feel this. Do I need to? Do I need someone to tell me to read the Bible? Do I need to, someone to tell me to love God? Uh, sorry, to to stand and pray and talk to God. Do I need someone to push me to come to the liturgy or to go and confess? I should be doing all of these things if if I have the love of God inside of me. Um, if I if I if I love if I love God, I'm going to spend time with Him and talk to Him and go to church, and will love to talk to Him. If you and if you are if you truly love God, you will be you know so keen not to do anything uh, or not to ac- accept the uh, the attacks of sin and to fall into that uh, into the trap of the devil. Um, and also, Saint John uh, tells us, little children, let us not love in word or in tongue, but in deed and truth. We can we can all talk the talk, but we can't walk the walk. We need to be able to be a- we need to be able to you know, deeply with our heart inside, love in truth and in deed, rather than just talk and, and uh, or in word and time. Um, so it's important for us, you know, to um, to really seek that love, that Christ. And we, we, learn, we learn all this love from Christ. So it's important for us to be able to um, seek or search that love um, that Christ, that Christ gives us. And a beautiful, a beautiful litany in the, in the liturgy of St. Cyril, is that we have to? Is that once a Buna finishes the uh, the, uh, the institution, there are certain litanies. One of them is faith without searching. The, uh, the second one is love without hypocrisy. And this is the, this is the true basis of our love that we need to un- that we need to be able to uh, reach in our life. Love the Lord uh, your God with all your soul. The soul meaning the entire being, with all of our senses, the the ears that loves God's voice through the liturgy through the. Um, through the Bible, through uh, a voice of, you know, a buna from a sermon or uh, a Bible study, we look at the image of uh, the image of God with our eyes in everything that we have in everything that we see in this world. You know, uh, you know, sometimes we can take it as a as a as an in an impure manner. So if we look at things with the image of Christ in in or that God created everything in our lives, you know, if we look at it, everything is pure. Um, this is loving the Lord with all of our soul and with all of our senses and through our eyes in the image of God. And the tongue, obviously, that we talk to God with. And obviously, our sense of smell is a, is a bit of a difficult one. But when we come to church, the first thing we smell is the bukhur, even the incense. Even, this, even if there's no liturgy, we can still, you know, smell it and, it's, uh, and it smells nice. And that connects us with prayer and that connects us with God. Um, love the Lord your God with all your mind. We have to ask ourselves, is our mind preoccupied with, uh, with God or is it busy with people, busy with money, busy with, uh, with problems in our lives? So we have to make sure that, you know, that our mind is preoccupied with the, with the one that we love. And, of, and sometimes, uh, you know, we can give this, uh, this example with a, uh, with two partner, with a part, like it's with two partners who spend so much time together. And because they both love each other, their minds are preoccupied together. Their um, uh, their souls are preoccupied together, and you know they 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 pretty much shut out everything around them, and they focus on each other. And this is the same, you know, the the kind of the same attributes that we need in order to love God with all of our mind. Also, and the last one is to love the Lord your God with all your strength. Another question, are we willing to exert our effort for uh, efforts with God until the last breath or are you saving your energy for something else or for you or for yourself for something different? How far are we willing to exert your effort for God because your tiredness is a measure, measure, measurement of love, but it is also effort, tiredness and and will. So love is not just thoughts and feelings, but love is um is is our action. Are we willing to go the extra mile for our brother and sister? Uh, also, you know, um, we'll come to when we come to the next commandment that says, "Love your neighbor as yourself." Of course, this will, you know, this will have this will look at our actions, things that we do to ourselves that we are that we have to do to other people. 
So love your neighbor as yourself. So who is your neighbor? And we look at the parable of the Good Samaritan. He is everyone and every person that we meet on the street or that we meet in, that we meet in, in general, in uh, like face to face. Even if he is of another race or another religion or he is your neighbor, we have to love that person. A relative or someone who is close to us is every partner with us in humanity or living, sharing this earth together. Even if they are miles away between, miles away between you and you and this person. However, if he, if that person needs you to stand with, 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 like with him or her in a tribulation or a trial or, or something that's going on, we have to stand with that person just as the Samaritan did. And don't forget that the Samaritan, when he came to help the, uh, the person who was wounded, they were considered as enemies, enemies by, you know, by just by geography or just, you know, between place, place and place. So, you know, regardless of whether we see this person as an enemy or we see him or we see them as a, uh, uh, as a friend, we have to help them just as we would help ourselves. And this is more difficult because it means that we have to think about ourselves and how we would treat the other person in front of us um, as we would treat ourselves. If I, scratch, if, I, if I scarred myself or if I uh, scratch myself by accident, and I have to run to the hospital just to heal, heal the wound or get, get the doctor to heal the wound. Do I do, if I find my brother or sister doing this, uh, Yanni, he's, he's hurt the same way. Do I go and take him to the hospital as well? That's something that we have to ask. We have to deal with others as I would deal with myself and deal with others without any effort and without even double, without even thinking twice of helping that person. So uh, and and think about and thinking about our comfort levels and and all of that. So it's important for us that we love the Lord our God with all of our soul. We sorry with all of our hearts, with all of our soul, with all of our strength, with all of our mind, and love our neighbor as yourself. And Christ says to us, "If you do this, you will live." And this is a commandment, a great commandment by uh, by the Lord Jesus Christ to all of us. And it's important that we. Um, contemplate on it in our in our spiritual mountain in our uh, retreat place uh, and um, and dwell on these so we can become perfect like our father in heaven is perfect and glory be to God